Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com and today I'm going to take you along as we spruce up the window box and add some flowers and herbs for spring. Also a planter on the front porch. I'm gonna share some tips for creating front porch planters. And then I'm going to share with you our plans for an upcoming porch slash landscaping renovation that'll hopefully happen this spring, it might stretch into the summer, but hopefully not the fall, but a lot of projects end up doing that. So I'm just gonna walk you through the plans and take you along. Now I'd hope to film this outside because that makes the most sense, but it's super windy and I was afraid that the wind on the mic would just be really obnoxious. So I'm just gonna play it safe and record it right here in my living room. Now it just now makes sense to be planting things outside. Normally we can get away with it a little bit earlier, but we've actually had some really cold weather. I'm sure a lot of you have as well. All throughout, I think most of the United States, we've had some really late snowstorms. We actually just recently had a snowstorm. And so I'm really glad that I didn't plant anything around Easter or any earlier because it probably would have got destroyed in a couple of really cold snaps that we're not used to getting this late. We actually still have the wood stove going, or at least we did yesterday, and then I, hopefully we're gonna be done with it for quite a while. But it is finally time to spruce up the window box. It's not time to put away the sweaters. I'm ready to get out spring clothes and be in dresses, but it's just not time, it's still warm. But we actually, I, I just, I told Luke I wasn't sure if I wanted to admit my mistake or not, but if you remember back in the fall, I shared a planter box where I put in a whole bunch of pumpkins and it was really beautiful for about a month or two. And one day a chicken flew up or something, we're not really sure, I think it was a chicken. Something pushed that thing over the edge and it actually busted off the wall. And so I. We obviously just put in way too heavy of things. So Luke fixed it, he reinforced it, and the window box is finally back up. So I took some of my kids into town and we went to a local nursery and I picked out some plants to make it spring and summer ready. Now, this will look really overgrown by about July and I actually love that. So right now, what I have in my window boxes definitely look a little bit scant. I put in quite a few plants, but by the end of the summer, I have things that will be vining down and herbs that'll be overgrown. And so it really will get so much better. So you'll wanna keep that in mind if you're making a window box that it will grow, obviously, but I feel like right now it looks kind of scant. Things that I like to put in the window boxes, one is herbs. Last year, I really enjoyed being able to open my kitchen window and grab a couple of herbs for a meal. Not like you can get a whole lot from that area, but it is just a really fun experience. We also ended up having a couple of chickens lay eggs in there. So I would just put my hand out the window and grab some herbs and eggs, just very farm to table, right? <laughs> very convenient. So I like to add vines, especially on the outside of the boxes that overhang because they really look beautiful spilling out, especially as they grow. I like to do flowers with lots of colors. Petunias are always really pretty and readily available, so I always grab some of those and I try to vary the color a bit. This year I also did get some dahlias. They had the most beautiful antique peach color. I bought plenty of plants so that I would have enough to do the crock on the front porch. I used to have a bunch of crocks, but a few of them have gotten broken. Crocks are some of my favorite things to use as planters because they have that farmhouse charm. Our house actually came with them. The previous owners left several antiques and I think I paid like 20 bucks for all of the crocs on the properties, which was great, especially since a few of them have gotten broken. Now, a few other creative planter ideas are butter churns, galvanized wash tubs, wooden crates, just Go to the antique and thrift shops and think what is large enough to put a few plants in and also consider drainage. Now with the Crocs, I personally don't like to cut any holes in them because I'm afraid that we'd shatter them. I'm sure that there's a way and I think I've even seen people doing that. But what I do instead 
is just add a lot of rock. So if you do several inches of gravel at the bottom, you can still water the plants modestly all through the season and it will never reach the roots. It will provide some drainage there in the bottom. Now, if you wanted to keep the same plants in year after year and you watered it too much so that not enough of the water evaporated, I assume that would become a problem. But for many years, I have had these front porch planters in these crocs and by doing the rocks in the bottom, I've never had an issue with the drainage. So that has worked and provided that color to my front porch all summer long. Another tip for creating pretty flower arrangements is to vary the heights. So I need to keep my eye out for another crock, but I used to have a 10 gallon crock and a three gallon crock that I would put one in front of the other so that we'd have one nice tall one in the back and then the shorter one in the front. Another option if your planters are similar in size is to try placing one on an antique chair or a stool to elevate that one above the others. Planters also look great going up front porch steps. I like to do that with pumpkins as well. Now you're gonna hear in my plans shortly that we're gonna do some new steps. So whenever I'm ready to highlight those steps, I'll probably be putting planters up those steps as well. Again, with my front porch planters, I like to add in some herbs and greens like kale, basil, or mint. Now they won't thrive necessarily like they would out in the garden because of the light and the heat but it is still fun to have that fresh smell or if you wanna grab a piece of basil here and there. For plants that will spill over the outside, Creeping Jenny, Green Coleus, English Ivy are all some great options to find. Usually I just go to the nursery and the ones that are spilling the most over the edges in their little pots are the ones that I grab. Some other wonderful plant ideas for front porch planters are thyme, daisies, ferns i love adding ferns and i'll probably pick up a bunch later this summer to hang on the hooks around the front porch as well as for planters geraniums petunias mint i know that a lot of you don't like mint because it can take over a bed and it does but if you're doing something that you're only planting seasonally like i did last year some mint and I ended up changing everything out for the fall, um, obviously it doesn't have a chance to take root. I do like to plant mint around the back of the house and just let it run wild. And I pick it all summer and add it to water, it's delicious. Ivy, zinnias, and rosemary are also great options. All right, now that I've shared our spring planters and some ideas for you for creating planters as well, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our porch plant, which I'm really excited about. The front porch of our house could definitely use some help in the curb appeal department, and I have some ideas. We've been working hard on the interior, and usually in the spring and summer, we get the renewed energy to want to work outside. So we worked last year on tearing out the other cottage, which was damaged beyond repair, putting in the garden, creating the garden arbor and the French tutors and the raised beds. But now that that is all established, we are super excited to work this spring on that curb appeal. So the first thing we did was remove that big tree that basically was very overgrown, not very pretty, blocked the view to the cottage and provided so much shade that the portion that I want to landscape really the grass doesn't even grow in that area. And we do have so many shade trees around the rest of our house that that one tree really can just go. So the first thing that we already did is remove the paver stones. So they just they don't have any charm to them. And we're going to make way for some paths. Now we've had some different ideas. I think what we've decided on are some paths kind of like this here. I found a few ideas here from Pinterest and we're going to have one path that goes out the front door and extends over to the cottage. And then we're going to have two that branch out and create borders for the front beds that stretch around to either side of the house. So the side porch on one side and then the entrance on the side near the garage. And then we're going to put some new plants all in the front of the house. So I've been meeting with a local plant specialist who specializes 
and native plants. So she's really into only growing things that are native to your environment, really good for the pollinators. And so she's going, going to help us select plants that will be really perfect for where we live. And we're going to fill in all in front of the porch, which I've wanted to do forever. Now, we've been debating on whether to cover the front porch that is concrete with wood. And we think what we're going to do is we're going to paint it this year with the intention of eventually covering it with wood, which I have plans on how to do it that will allow for the drainage off of the porch so that it won't warp the boards. But I think that we could get some more life out of the concrete. So for a few years, just by painting it without actually doing all of that, we can wait for the lumber prices to go down, which are insane right now, and just see if we can get some more time out of this poured concrete porch. Now, one thing we're gonna do to make that concrete look a little bit better is we're going to build new stairs. So Luke and I are going to build wider stairs than the one little concrete stair that we currently have. And we're going to make sure that there's at least three steps so that it will cover up a large portion of the concrete porch. It will extend all the way from one of the Victorian posts to the other. There'll be a handrail going down. So that much of the porch will be covered in the front with some wooden steps, which will give the appearance of wood. We'll have the rest painted. We'll have some tall plants. I'm thinking that maybe we'll like that improvement so much we won't even want to cover it with wood. But if we do and the paint all chips off, we will eventually be doing that project. This will just be a good way to spruce everything up and get some more life out of the concrete, which it's actually really in good condition. So you hate to do much with it, but it just doesn't have charm. So we are so excited to do all of those projects. We're gonna start on the steps pretty darn soon and the plants are coming in in just about a week. And so we'll start with that. We have to do a little bit of grading work before we add the paths, but I told Luke, it doesn't, even if we don't do this exactly perfectly, we're definitely going to make an improvement from what we have currently. Now, one more thing that we're doing that I'm really excited about is we are using a local wood turning company to make the running trim that goes around the top and the corbels that are over on the side porch. So a friend of mine, when she came, I can't remember if I told this story on here or if I told this story on Instagram, to be honest but you might've already heard it. But my friend, Sarah Jo from Briarton Farm, she visited our farmhouse last summer and she is an old house enthusiast. She knows a ton. And when she was looking at our side porch, she realized that we are missing the trim that we should have on the front porch. So all of the trim that goes around on the side porch and the corbels should be on the front porch, but was probably ripped out at some point. And then she made an artistic rendition of our home. She did a drawing and she included it. And from then on, I just knew that we needed to replace it to make it match how it would have been before. So I sent a whole bunch of measurements and I traced the corbels and the spindles and I commissioned a local woodworking company. Now, if you're in Missouri, they're actually not super local to me, they're across the state. So we're gonna have to make a trip to go get it, but it's called Aberroot Wood Turning. I also commissioned them to make five spindles that are currently missing on our Victorian staircase. So I actually just sent him one of the spindles to copy. But with the trim around the front porch, I couldn't actually send him anything from the side porch because I knew that if I actually ripped it out with all the layers of paint that we'd ruin it. So I just sent him tracing. So hopefully that all works out, but I think it's gonna add so much charm to the front porch. And then I'm thinking maybe I will paint the rocking chairs and the porch swing some other color and then we'll have these pretty spindles and corbels and the painted porch. So there's a lot of ideas swirling around my head. So hopefully they'll all come to fruition here in the next couple months or at least by the end of summer. And I'll be sharing the progress, of course, with you all along the way probably lots of outdoor projects. Last year this time, I started a series called This Week on the Homestead, and that was because all of our attention turns to outside whenever it gets warmer. And so I'm probably gonna take you along. Hopefully you enjoy watching it because we sure enjoy doing little projects like that and taking you along with us. All right, well, I hope that it's getting warm where you are and you are enjoying some time to get outside and shine up your outdoor spaces. 
and make sure if you're not yet following along to hit that subscribe button to follow along with more of our progress here on our little seven acre homestead and our 1860s farmhouse. I also make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse. Thank you.